Good afternoon, fellow Plexers. Today I want to make a video for Diego to talk about naming TV shows and episodes and how to automate it with FileBot. So it'll, it'll be a quick FileBot tutorial video. Well, maybe not so quick because I don't know when to stop talking. But the first thing I wanted to do is just go into Plex's support document for naming and organizing your TV shows. For those who aren't aware, Plex pulls metadata from both TMDB and TVDB for um, TV shows to, to grab the metadata, to grab the posters, the episode descriptions, the dates, all that sort of stuff. So by default, um, Plex doesn't really pull the metadata from either database. Plex keeps their own cache, kind of like a secret sauce mixture of both TMDB and TVDB for TV series. They do the same thing with movies with TMDB and IMDB. TVDB is not used for movies at all. So Plex tells you how to name things. Basically, you're going to take the proper show name from either database and Plex suggests putting the year in um, even if it's not listed at TVDB. It's always listed at TMDB. And then every written example under the show folder, they have a season folder. And every written example is always season 01 or season 02 and never season 1. Um, a lot of people just do season 1, but this is the written example. And then whatever you name the show folder is the first part of the episode file name. And then with TV shows, Plex always uses the written example of a space dash space as an official separator. In another TV naming guide, an alternative naming guide, well, not really alternative, it's an extra naming guide for editions of different movies. Plex shows that you can use a period instead of that official separator, but you're never going to replace a natural space with a period or an underscore. So the second part of this episode formatting is the season episode numbering. And this can be um, lowercase s01, lowercase e01. It could be capitalized s01, capitalized e01. And then again, the official space dash space separator or a period and the episode name. Now they're, they're also showing in this example that you can put extra information that's descriptive into the file name and they're telling you to put it into brackets in order to have Plex's series scanner ignore that extra information. And here they, they use an example of using the database ID number from TVDB in the show folder. So if we slide down, we'll see some more examples. And Plex does each example a little bit differently. So here's Doctor Who from 1963 with a TVDB ID number. Now Doctor Who at TVDB may or may not have the year in it. Most series don't have the year included in the proper description at TVDB, but the year is always included at TMDB. And usually the, the name of the show matches. Sometimes it doesn't which is an important thing to talk about. If you take a show like The Office, Shameless, um, or Ghost, if the show was on first in the UK market, TVDB will give the proper show title of just the show name like Shameless to the show that was on first. When the US market did a reboot of Shameless, TVDB will name that show Shameless Space and then parentheses, U.S., ending parentheses. And that's just how they do it. So if a show was originally on in the U.S. and then there was a reboot in the U.K., the U.S. version will just have the, the regular name and the, the um, U.K. version won't. Let me, let me show an example of that before we move into FileBot. So Diego wanted me to show an example with Unreal so let me just do this first.
All right, so Shameless here in the UK got a year assigned to it. Shameless in the US in 2011 didn't. It just has the US in parentheses. Here's another Shameless series that is just plain Shameless from 2017. And TVDB does list movies too, but we're not going to bother with that because Plex doesn't use TVDB with any movie. So let's do The Office. Okay, so the UK version came out first and it's just the plain office without a year. But the year's here, so you could put that in parentheses after this, even though you're naming from this database. The US version has the US in parentheses, and again, you can just stick the, the year after that, space parentheses 2005. Um, and let's do ghost. All right, so I think there must be a change because originally it was just playing Ghost in the database for the UK show, and then the US version got Ghost US. But again, Plex is recommending to put the year in even if the year's not part of the official title. So let's go back to the naming guide. Um, Plex doesn't say it, but they use an example that you don't have to have the show title in the episode file name. This just has season 01 E01 space dash space with the episode name. And then it shows the next episode. And then the man from the moon, or from the earth to the moon, they're showing um, using the proper show name and then the episode season episode coding without using an episode name. Grey's Anatomy, they're showing the special season, season 00, which could be specials too. And they've got the, they're passing down the folder name to this part. And then they have the coding here and then they have the episode name. So you really can't go wrong. I like to use the full the full setup like this. Where whatever is listed as the show title is listed as the first part of the episode um, name. Okay, so that's basically that document, which is always good to consult. So let's get back to Unreal. All right, so you can name just to this. You don't even need the year or the TVDB number. Plex will find this. And if we switch to the movie database, we'll see there's a different poster, but it's the same show. And you know it's a show because it says TV here. If we back up and search movies, it doesn't say TV show, we know this is a movie because it says documentary. If we click on this one, again, it doesn't say TV show, so you can't mix, you can't put a movie in a Plex TV show library and you can't put a TV show episode in a Plex movie library. So always consult these two databases. Now, if we want to automate the process, I have FileBot here. Now I have a lot of custom expressions I'm currently using this one to create structure, but if you install FileBot by default, it now has built-in expressions. I have to hold down my shift key when I click that icon to see them, but if you don't have any custom expressions already loaded in FileBot, you'll see these four. Organize movies for Plex, organize episodes for Plex, match by episode title, and match by absolute number. You really only need the first two, and both the first two are going to put in the movie database number into the, the um, structure. So let me simply drag these two. Now, these are not the actual episodes. Let me click on them. Plexers, test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. 
So these are both the flexors. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Flexors. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Flexors. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Flexors. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. I don't know why I can't close it. Well, we're going to see my Linux skills come in. Every video I do is cold, and I don't like to stop them and redo them. Because I figure if I run into a problem, well, let me show this on screen. I'm going to do X kill, enter, and kill that video. So this is just some dummy files I made up, so I don't have to worry about a YouTube strike. I don't have these episodes on my computer. I'm simply going to use them as an example for renaming. So I'll drag them into FileBot. And they sit over here. Now, I can use my own expressions, but if I hold down the Shift key, I'll see what a new FileBot user will see, and I'll pick Organize Episodes for Plex. So this is picking up some sort of metadata from how I had these files renamed earlier. So I'm just going to have the series name of Unreal here. So I think that's a poster from probably one of the seasons for the TVDB entry. I'm not sure. I'm just going to select it. So Plex is going to rename these and create structure with this default expression. It's going to create a media folder on whatever computer you're using to rename the media. And then it will create a TV show library folder. And then it will create the series folder, which is Unreal, with the TMDB ID number in the proper format. It'll create a season one folder. And then the file name will be unreal space dash space so one e o one space dash space return. So let's make sure it's picked the right show. So if we click in, and if we view all seasons, and we view season one, we know that the first two episodes are named return and relapse. Relapse. And if we click into TVDB into season one, we know it's return or relapse too. So I'm sorry that text is so small in FileBot. Under Linux, FileBot doesn't scale up properly with my desktop monitor settings. And it's easier to read under Windows. So if I simply hit rename, it's going to create that structure. And boom, it's done. And now if I go to media, and refresh, now remember it was going in a directory called TV Shows, and here's an example I did for another FileBot video for somebody, so let's get rid of that. We have our full structure. So exactly as it's named at either database, the TMDB ID, the season 01 folder, and the two episode file names. Now, let me do this. Let me throw it back in. And I will name it to my structure. Now I'm not going to create structure, I'm just going to rename the files only. And again, we have to pick the show. And we know it's a match because of the two episode names. And this is adding media characteristics. It's going to add the, the video um, format, the video codec, the audio format, and the audio codec. So now if I hit rename, and I go back in, so we'll see how the FileBot default expression named the show folder. Well, if I had created structure with my expression, it would have named the show folder this way. 
you don't really need the, the ID from either database in it as long as you have the year and the, the name. And then you'll see it's the same season code, just it's capitalized with the S and the E in my custom expression. It's got the same episode names. And then my expression puts this extra characteristic um, information into brackets just like Plex tells us to so that the scanner ignores all this. I like to be able to look at a file name and know um, some information about the file, whether it's 1080p, 720p, um, whether it's a two-channel soundtrack or a 5.1-channel soundtrack. Uh, most of my media is H.264 encoded, so that would say that here. If it was X.265, it would say H.E.V.C. So that's, that's how I like to use FileBot. So if we open it back up in FileBot, now Windows, I think you have to drag it in. With my Linux elementary OS distro, I can just right-click, open in, and choose FileBot. FileBot will come right back up. Now again, these are the current expressions I'm using, but I have other ones that I've used in the past, TV episode rename only. And you'll see that's putting the same year into it, and it's naming the file the same way. What my custom expression does and let me grab the one that creates structure. And we'll break this out. It's a long, long expression. So let me just copy that. And let's get a document going here. All right, so let's make it all one color and enlarge the font. Okay, so what this does is it replaces an extra year. If you tell FileBot to put the year in, um, you end up with a few series having issues. And let's go back to TVDB. Um, okay, so if I was renaming this series, my, my earlier expression without all this replace trailing brackets would end up putting a double year in because most shows don't have the year in it in the database. But if a show does have the year in it, my old expression would just duplicate the year. So I grabbed this from a fellow member of the group who had, a, who had this extra information that takes care of that issue. So parentheses, um, brackets, Y for year, and the bracket, the curly Q bracket, and the parentheses, um, backslash season, um, and this shows the season code. This, this gives you everything you need. So this part creates structure. I'm sorry. This pla place creates your your folder name. This part creates your season folder names. And then this part is what creates the episode name. So again, this part takes care of the duplicate year issue when it pops up. Um, this is the season episode code. The T in the curly Q bracket supplies the, the episode name. And then I've included the brackets here. And in the curly Q brackets for VF is the video format. This is the video codec, audio format, audio codec. And then the developer of FileBot helped me with this. I wanted to add either this to the file name or this if a episode or movie has embedded English subtitles or embedded unlabeled subtitles. I could make the expression longer to search for Spanish embedded subtitles or German or French, but I didn't want that. I just wanted to know whether a file had embedded English or embedded subtitles that weren't labeled because they probably were English already. And I could use another tool, MKV Toolnext, to 
tool nicks to flag those unlabeled subs um, properly if I want it. So this is, my, this is my full expression. This is what I use myself. Um, let's go back to FileBot. I have to hold down the Shift, Edit, and if I look at FileBot's default expression, it's pretty simple compared to mine. It's got drive with some spaces and brackets, um, forward slash media. So you could, you could adjust their expression with your own custom one. If you wanted to automatically rename and place it right in your library and your, your um, library was in a folder called Plex lowercase, this would do it. If your library was in a folder media lowercase, that would do it. And then the Plex ID just creates everything else. So you, you can do custom tricks like I do. You can adapt what FileBot offers. But FileBot is a very, very easy to use program and it will also look for subtitles so if you click on subtitles and you go and get yourself a free open subtitles account register for a free account you can click this little icon here and link your account open subtitles gives you 200 api calls a day which means you can search for 200 subtitles in filebot each day before you need to have a paid subscription. So all you have to do once you make that connection is click this little settings icon, go down to the bottom to post processes, choose fetch subtitles, and then click rename. Now this won't find subtitles, or it shouldn't find subtitles, but it's looking for them. Well, it did. FileBot uses heuristics to look for matched subtitles. Um, but we already know these can't be matched subtitles because my original videos weren't the actual episodes. But you see how it renamed them properly. What sub, what, the problem with FileBot and subtitles is you don't know what you're going to get. There are four subtitles and hearing impaired subtitles and you'll never get a four subtitle with FileBot nor can you tell it to get one. But sometimes you end up with an SDH subtitle and you have to rename it properly which I did not I left down a period and a, a SRT subtitle is just a text file so I've associated my text file um, with this and I'm looking through this is not an SDH or a hearing impaired subtitle because I don't see the extra information it might have a line here in parentheses saying wind blowing or, or loud music or spooky music. It might just have a lot of contextual stuff in there. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a hearing impaired subtitle. I just didn't look far enough. Well, it doesn't have a lot of contextual clues because they're few and far between, but it's still an official hearing impaired subtitle. So if you see something in brackets or parentheses, you can just relabel it like I did. Um, FileBot auto discovers the language of the subtitle, and to be Plex compliant, it needs to either be the three digit co code or the two digit. So this would be legal to EN, but FileBot assigns the three digit language code. So FileBot will discover that itself with SDH subtitles. And I just helped it along by marking it as a hearing impaired one with the SDH. So if we look at this one, we find out right away that it's the hearing impaired version and you would just rename that the same way. Dot SDH capitalized. Um, now, if you really get into subtitles, I think Plex officially supports HI2, but HI could be mistaken for a language code. 
because it's also an official language code. So I've never tested this, but I would not want to um, worry about whether an HI HI would work or an ENG HI. So it's just easier to use SDH. So that's it. That's FileBot. Um, you don't need to use custom codes like I do, um, but I left things on the screen long enough so you can. The last bit for, for this is if you're going to use a custom code to get media characteristics, you want to have media info installed alongside FileBot. Um, and media info is what FileBot will use to pull those characteristics. And if you're a Linux user like I am, you can't install either of these from FlatHub as a flat pack. These are sandboxed apps. They don't talk to each other, and the two apps need to be um, in communication to work. So if you're on Linux, you'll want to install FileBot from the .deb um, folder if you're using an Ubuntu-based distro, and the same with Media Info. Or if you're using a, a, a non flat pack enabled distro, you can add these right from the App Store if they're already included. So thanks for watching, and basically everything I know about a Plex series library, TV show library, and how to use FileBot to quickly get things in the proper structure and, and naming. Thanks for watching.